Many people here in East Texas have probably never darkened the door of a Catholic church. Shoot, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people in the world have never darkened the door of a Catholic church. But if there is one thing we almost always can count on is that everyone has an opinion about what we believe regarding the Eucharist, whether they know what they are talking about or not. Cannibals used to be one of the names we had in the early era of the church. And today, we are kindly laughed at as someone says, Oh, bless her heart. She thinks that piece of bread really is Jesus. What shocks many folks is what they read in chapter 6 of the Gospel of John. When they read what is called the Bread of Life Discourse. And see Jesus say crazy things like, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, for Catholics, this doesn't come as a shocker, since we hear this in the readings and hopefully hear a homily about it with some regularity. But when we are asked to describe to people what happens at the holy sacrifice of the Mass, so often this verse escapes our memory, and we are left looking up at the heavens, hoping for a moment of enlightenment. Today, I'd like to introduce you to two key concepts regarding the Mass. One, that it is a representation of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Two, at the same time, it is a memorial of the Last Supper, and therefore a meal whereby we receive the grace of God through the gift of Himself in the Eucharist. Every time we go to Mass, we enter a different world as we enter into a sacred space set apart for the worship of God. Now, as we enter this different world, we have a tendency, or hopefully do, of thinking more of the things of God and less of the things of this world. One of God's attributes is He is eternal. That is, there is no time, per se, with God. And so, when we enter into the church and begin the celebration of the Mass, we enter into the eternal now of God and history is made present to us once again. The church, in her official teaching, says, When the church celebrates the Eucharist, she commemorates Christ's Passover, and it is made present. The sacrifice of Christ offered once for all on the cross remains ever present. Therefore, the Mass takes us back to and helps us enter into the moments of Calvary, so beautifully and devotionally realized through the praying of the Stations of the Cross. When we enter into the Mass with this in mind, it makes the minuscule sacrifice of praying on your knees seem so small in comparison to Christ on the cross. And even this little act of sacrifice can be a way in which you unite yourself more intimately with our Lord in His passion, which He endured for our salvation. The second point, so beautifully bound up with the first, is that at the altar, where this glorious drama unfolds before us, the priest, acting in the person of Christ the head, offers those sweet words of consecration that transform ordinary bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, at the altar of sacrifice and table of our communion with the Lord, the redemptive work of Christ is perpetuated just as Christ commanded his disciples to at the Last Supper when he said, Do this in memory of me. So the next time you are at Mass, close your eyes. Remember for a moment what love the Lord reveals to you every time the Mass is celebrated. As heaven meets earth, God meets man, and we meet that which we were created for, communion with our Lord. I'm Bishop Joseph Strickland. Thank you so much for viewing this episode of The Way of Christ. It is an excellent resource for growing in your Catholic faith, for deepening your life in Jesus Christ. 
You can purchase your own copy of The Way of Christ at stphilipinstitute.org slash store. God bless you, and let us continue to grow in his light.